Hello there my friends, I'm just making a short video here in the kitchen of my home to educate you as to what the hell is going on in this virus situation. First of all, I have an honours degree in biology, I have a master's degree in contemporary biology and biochemistry, I have a diploma in education, I'm a chartered biologist, I'm a member of the Institute of Biology, I'm also a member of the Royal Society of Biology, that's a big one. I have a diploma in human nutrition. I am not, I repeat, not showing you those qualifications, thinking I'm on some sort of an eagle trip, far from it. The world on a smaller hates smart asses. I'm just the son of a little country farmer who just happened to read a lot of books, do a lot of exams and attain good qualifications in the field of biology. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm doing this here to help you uh, overcome this problem we have at the moment. What is a virus? A virus is the smallest living organism known to man. Some people reckon that life on Earth started off as a virus billions of years ago. A virus cannot live by making its own food. It has to live inside an animal or a plant. In this case, the coronavirus lives inside us in the lungs, feeding off our lung tissue and will kill you. How do we get a virus into the body? By transference from someone who already has a virus. Now, how do you get it? Viruses are all around you, all around me, on the skin, on the head, but they can't get into your body. They cannot penetrate the skin. The only way a virus can get into your body is up that hole, up that hole, or in through that hole. So, let's say someone has a virus and they sneeze. I'm going to use Mr. Sheen here. See him in the kitchen. Watch. See? See the spray? So, when someone sneezes, Millions of little tiny droplets of virus come out of the, out of the nose and the mouth and it can maybe travel a metre, maybe a metre and a half, land on surfaces. Now, if you are in the presence of someone who sneezes, obviously it'll get in there, maybe up your nose. If you're not anywhere near that person and you come and you put your hands on an object like a tumbler or a cup or a doorknob or a toilet handle or anything that the person has sneezed on or touched, the virus will be picked up by your hand. Nothing will happen until you do this. Once you do that, you're in trouble. That's why everybody's advocating you wash your hands continually with good products to keep to kill those viruses. Okay. Now, what happens when a virus gets into your body? Okay. Let's go back to the last time you had the flu. The last time you had the flu it was caused by a coronavirus. Yes, a coronavirus. There's thousands of different coronaviruses. This one we have now it happens to be a really, really, really bad bastard. But the last time you had a flu, it was caused by a coronavirus. The virus got into you. Uh, after a couple of days, your body reacted by raising the temperature because your body's really, really smart. It knows if it raises the temperature, viruses will be killed. Um, if that does not kill it, what then happens is your immune system is brought into action. Your immune system is composed of white blood cells. In your bloodstream, you have red blood cells, white blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen. The white blood cells are there for your defense force. And there are two distinct soldiers. There's the foot soldiers, and there's the super duper Delta Force SAS killers. The foot soldiers are made in your bone marrow, in your arms, legs. There are two distinct soldiers. There's the foot soldiers, and there's the super duper Delta Force SAS killers. Foot soldiers are made in your bone marrow, in your arms, legs, ribs, etc. They're pretty mediocre soldiers, but they will deal with most viruses. But the time you had the flu, they couldn't kill that. And after four or five days, these guys could not beat the virus. These guys were called into operation. Now these are made not in your bone marrow, they're made in places called your lymph nodes. Your lymph nodes are located here in your tonsils, under your armpits and in your groin and throughout your body. But the six main factories that produce these killers are here under your arms and in the ground. So what happens, they could happen after five or six days, your last flu. This vulnerable world needs something more powerful than any of us. These guys were called into operation. Now these are made not in your bone marrow, they're made in places called your lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are located here in your tonsils, under your armpits and in your groin and throughout your body. But the six main factories that produce these killers are 
here on the arms and the ground. So what happens, they could happen after five or six days, your last flu, these guys come into action, and what they do, they're really smart. They get the virus, they capture it, and they take it off to the headquarters, to the factories where they were made. The scientists in here go to, go to work, and they work out and decode the DNA and the genetic structure of the virus. They make a chemical, give it to these guys here. These guys come out, and they smother the virus with this blanket. It's called an antibody. That'll take about four or five days for those antibodies to kill all the virus. So maybe a week and a half, a week to a week and a half, depending on how strong the virus is, you will get better. Okay? That's how the, that's called the immune response. I sniffed her. <laughs> so, in order to feed these soldiers, and these soldiers, these guys need good nutrition. They need 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 10 amino acids and 3 essential fatty acids. You don't have to know what those things are because you don't get them in your food by the way. You don't get them in pasta, you don't get them in McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken. You don't get them in modern day processed foods. But this is a fantastic product here. You get it in the health bin in Union Street in Lurgan, County Armagh. It's it's about 38 quid, but it's a pound a day for your health. This stuff contains all the minerals and vitamins that them soldiers need. See? Them guys love that. They love that stuff. The second thing you need to take is garlic. Marvellous product for feeding them guys. The next thing you need to take is vitamin D3. Not vitamin D, vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is made by the reaction of the sun on your skin. That's how vitamin D is made. No other way. The sun shines on, your skin, shines on your skin, produces vitamin D. That is one of the best foods for your immune system soldiers. There's been no sun. It started raining in Ireland last August. Hasn't freaking stopped until today. Today is a very nice day. But uh, not enough vitamin D will be made because the sun's too low on the horizon. The sun has to be between uh, up high in the horizon or as high in the sky between the hours of 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the afternoon to get the proper wavelength of sunlight to make vitamin D. So even today's sun at a low horizontal plane does not produce enough vitamin D3. And last, but not by no means least, is good old reliable vitamin C. 1,000 milligrams, one in the morning, one at night. What I'm trying to tell you is stock up on your immune system to feed these guys because this bastard is coming. And you, you're reading the news, you see all the deaths in Italy, in Ireland, in England, Scotland, all over the world. This, these guys are deadly. So... That's it, folks. That's my take on it. I hope you've understood what I've said. I try to rush it here because the attention time span for a video was two minutes. This one's lasted seven minutes. So please take heed to what I've said there, okay? Good luck, and good luck, and I hope everything works out for you.